Welcome to the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. I'm Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. I'm very privileged to represent our ocean state. And uh, with me is Dennis Nixon, who leads in our ocean state the Sea Grant program, which was a program established years ago uh, by one of my predecessors in the Senate, Senator Claiborne Pell. Uh, this is Ocean's Day, and from the ocean state, uh, we wanted to share with you some of our thoughts because the changes that are happening out in the ocean are ones that we need to pay attention to. Whether it's the bay warming up behind me, or the ocean acidifying across the globe, or sea levels rising measurably right over there at Naval Station Newport, uh, or the marine debris that the Volvo Ocean Racers, who just came through Newport, reported seeing all across the seas, even in the most distant oceans. Uh, there's a message that the oceans are trying to impart to us, and it would be good on this Ocean Day to listen. Thank you, Senator. There really are two stories to tell here. One is the local story, and I think we are acting very effectively locally in Rhode Island. Back in the 1970s, 37 million gallons a day of raw sewage were flowing into Narragansett Bay. That stopped, and we've done a remarkable job of spending hundreds of millions of dollars to clean up the input into Narragansett Bay. We're doing much better um, in many areas. However, nationally and internationally, we've got some, some big things to worry about. We still don't know, five years after the fact, what the real long-term impacts of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill will have. We know that spill uh, happened in an area where bluefin tuna were spawning. And with the amount of oil that went in the water and the dispersant, the corexit, that was sprayed on that oil, we don't know and we won't know for years what the long-term impacts really will be. Second, uh, as you mentioned, Senator Whitehouse, the, the marine debris problem is getting worse all the time. Uh, recent studies in Science and Nature have shown that particularly the amount of plastics going in the ocean is having a serious effect on the food web as the pr plastic breaks down and is, and is ingested by smaller organisms. And uh, finally, the problem of ocean acidification, which you have discussed in your speeches in the Senate every week, um, is a very real one globally, but we're seeing very significant effects in some estuaries around the country uh, that we have to study much more carefully. And it's a subject of great concern and one that we're about to send out a research uh, a request for proposals just, uh, just this week to figure out what's going on here in Narragansett Bay. The oceans have a lot of messages if we're prepared to listen. You can go to the far northern Arctic seas and watch the ice sheets melt away. You can go to the tropic coral reefs and watch them bleaching. You can go to the very bottom of the food chain where species that are at the very base of the food web, like the, the humble pteropod, are suffering in an acidified ocean where it's harder for them to make their shells. You can go to the very top of the food chain where the uh, apex mammals are now so filled with uh, poisons of various kinds that many of them are swimming hazardous waste. You can go right behind us to Narragansett Bay where it's uh, three to four degrees warmer, mean winter water temperature, or you can go to the farthest corners of the Pacific where the garbage gyres of this plastic Dennis has been talking about are located. Everywhere you go, the oceans have an important lesson for us as a species. They've taken care of us for a long time. It's time for us to learn better how to take care of our oceans.